and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria, British Columbia on the west coast of Canada, right on the Pacific Ocean. I hope everybody has had a great week and is looking forward to a fantastic weekend or is having a great weekend, depending on your time zone. Welcome, Preeti. Hi, Rashika. In this class, everyone, uh, we are doing speaking part two, the long part, the cue card, and I will give you some tips on how to approach that band nine uh, perfect score. Um, this is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. It's a good idea to stay tuned for this class because uh, tomorrow we will do part three, which is a continuation of this part two. Uh, if you'd like to become a member of our channel, uh, click on the uh, join button next to the subscribe button on the channel. And um, we will have an all chat class coming up in 90 minutes that will be listening parts three and four continuation uh, from yesterday. Uh, w this class, everyone, of course, is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Uh, visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. Uh, on both of those websites, we have loads and loads of help uh, for you to improve communication and language, vocabulary, and grammar. This is our academic website here with the blue background. Uh, you can click this big red button to join the premium package. We are a British Council Registration Center, Certified British Council Agents. We're here to help you. Um, this is our general IELTS uh, portal here. Again, gilshelp.com. You can click that big red button to join us there. If you have any questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. And of course, check out uh, our Instagram, IELTS underscore aehelp or gilshelp, uh, and check out our apps, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. We've got lots of great free material for you as well. Um, so do visit and use those uh, software. Okay, everyone. So right now, speaking part two. Let's get into this uh, without further delay. This is a speaking class, of course, so make sure to speak and repeat. I will uh, give you the steps that you have to practice and follow at home. Uh, some of our members know this. It's great practice. We're going to go one step at a time through this cue card section. So uh, the introduction to your speaking interview takes, I'd say, roughly about uh, two minutes. And then you have about three, four minutes of part one questions, maybe about four or five different questions. And then uh, the examiner will... Uh, introduce part two, the long part. And this is challenging because it's not the kind of speaking that we're used to uh, either in English or uh, for many people in their own language. It's basically doing a small presentation on a surprise uh, topic and question. Okay. Hi, Nico. Welcome aboard. So uh, you're in your out speaking interview and you're feeling confident. You're answering the examiner's questions. And then the examiner will kind of suddenly uh, say, okay, that's the end of part one. Now for part two, I'm going to show you a card with some questions. Uh, please do not touch the card uh, because of COVID. They ask you not to touch the card. Uh, they have some scrap paper there that you can use for notes. You bring your own pen and they will tell you there's some note paper for you. You have your own pen. Um, the... Uh, Preparation time is one minute. You have one minute to uh, look at the questions, think about your answers, and then you will have two minutes to speak. You can take notes in that one minute if you wish. That one minute is a really important one minute. It is 60 seconds, so it's a fair bit of time when it comes to human thinking and planning. Uh, as long as you're confident and you go step by step. One minute is 60 seconds. So um, in English, when we count seconds, we often count it as 
one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand five one thousand six one thousand it roughly takes about a second to say the number and a thousand so if you count to 60 doing that okay or uh, to 10 six times, uh, you realize that 60 seconds is a fair bit of time for human thought. And so no need to panic. Use that time wisely. Okay. All right. Enjoy that tea saga. So everybody got that members, the how you count seconds in English, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. I don't know if anybody's timing me, but you'll see that that's pretty close to a an exact second when you do it like that, okay? So that's how you count seconds in English if you ever want to do that, all right? Okay, um, so Janiel says, got it. Now I can count seconds in English. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so in that 60 seconds, uh, you've got a lot to do. Uh, the first step in your one-minute preparation time is to look at the question carefully. Now, when the examiner shows you the card, uh, they will say the first uh, part of it. So they'll say, talk about an object that is used to control society. Okay, so they'll voice that for you. Now, don't just skip that part and think, oh, well, they read that for me, so whatever. Um, but actually read through the questions again from the top. So look at the card part two. Talk about an object that is used to control society. Uh, what is the object? How does this object work? Uh, where uh, is this object usually located? Let me just take out that unnecessary confusing word there. It's an artifact. So where is this object usually located? Um, how does it control people? And what do people think about it? <laughs> okay, so uh, really pay attention to these kind of double questions that you might see near the end. It's very important. Okay, um, so you've looked at this. All right. Now, um, what is your next step? So you read the question carefully. You should read this twice. Talk about an object that is used to control society. Uh, now, what's your next step? What should you do? Okay, and this is happening in seconds. Okay, here I'm going into deep explanation, but of course in your one minute preparation time, this is happening in seconds. Okay, so first step, read the card carefully, pay special attention uh, to the topic statement. Make sure you don't go off topic. Okay. And, um, okay. Janiel says for step two, you can identify the category. Um, so in this case, it's an object. Sure. So again, um, make sure to practice these, by the way, members, uh, evenly. So if you practiced uh, yesterday talking about an object for part two, then uh, make sure that the next time you do a part two, practice a person or practice an event. So you should keep uh, a clear log of these, okay? So identify the category. Um, it's either person, uh, place, object, idea, or event, one of those five, or a little bit of a combination. In this case, it is an object, okay? All right, um, and uh, when you talk about an object, what do you need to include to talk about it in a very clear and comprehensible way, okay? So when talking about an object, what should your response include about the object. So um, this isn't um, me reinventing the wheel. Uh, this is just simply some logical, rational, uh, standard uh, communication technique based on the category. So Janiel says, um, talk about its appearance. Yep, that's important. What else is important? And there is a clear sequence. So there is a clear one, two, three, four, five here that you need to kind of focus on. Okay, Preeti says history. Uh, Rashika says origin, function, significance. Yeah, so, yeah. 
origin, appearance, function, significance. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, object, uh, when you talk about it, origin, where does it come from? Where did you get it? Okay, how did it get to you or how did it get to society in this case? Um, its appearance, uh, what does it look like? Okay, what's the appearance of this? And its function, so how does it function? How does it um, work? And then uh, its significance. So why is it important? What utility does it have? Uh, what place does it have in society or what place does it have for the individual? So uh, think about it this way. And if you go through this like one, two, three, four uh, in this order, you will have a very clear response talking about that object. Okay, sure. So step three. Identify the tense uh, used or tenses used in your response. Okay, um, so when we're talking about uh, this object here used to control society, um, what would be the main tense? So what would be the main tense uh, that we would use here? What do you think? So talk about an object that is used to control society. What is the object? How does this object work? Uh, where is this object usually located? Janiel says probably the present, present perfect, and maybe some past as well, right? The origin of the object. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Janiel. I think it's mostly the present because it's a general answer, right? So. Yeah, I agree. Okay, um, what's my next step? So I'm starting to get a lot of clarity. Okay, so uh, I've read the question. I have a clear idea of what it's asking me, all of the different questions contained. I've identified that it's an object. I've quickly remembered that I need to talk about its origin, its appearance. I need to talk about how it works and its importance to society, um, all while keeping in mind, of course, the specific questions. I know I should use a lot of general tense, present, present perfect, present perfect progressive. We're going to practice those. Um, and um, what should I do now? What's my next step? Step number four in this case. Really going just one step at a time. And again, when you practice this and you can uh, just go one, two, three, four in your exam. You're going to do really well. Yeah, so Rashika says, think of two to three possible ideas. Sure. So, And pick the one, we've talked about this, members, you know this, pick the one that is original, that is uh, easy to talk about, and lots of information. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so let's do that. Let's come up with a few different ideas. So again, going back. Talk about an object that is used to control society. What is the object? How does this object work? Where is this object usually located? How does it control people and what do people think about it? Uh, give me some ideas. So when you visualize, think about society, visualize society, and then um, let's uh, think about some objects. Now, when you think about objects, here's a little tip here. Simple is beautiful. Okay, um, 
So Saga says social media. Social media is an abstract object because it's virtual. Uh, TV, school, books, radio. Okay, so let's say uh, TV, books, radio. Yep, those could be some objects. Uh, Janiel says medical mask, right, these days for sure. Uh, that could be, right, because when you have a viral outbreak and you make it mandatory, it's used to control society and control the spread of viruses in, in society as well. Okay, uh, let's see what else you come up with. Uh, Nico says a helmet could be a good idea. Yep, I agree, a helmet could be a good idea as well. All right, uh, Rashika says pen, yep. Phone as well, of course. Okay, some of these ideas aren't too original yet. Um, of course, uh, weapons, gun, for example, uh, is definitely a, uh, an object. A taser, anybody know what a taser is? Hmm, capitalized. Okay, a taser. Anybody know what a taser <laughs> is? I think there might be some other words for it as well. In Canadian English, we just use the word taser, but I guess it might be one type of this product. Uh, a taser, yeah, Rashika says, I know what that is. Yeah, it's one of those little uh, uh, devices that electrocutes people. Police use it when somebody gets out of hand. Okay, um, there are still some other objects out there that are definitely used uh, to control society, and nobody has really thought about them. Yeah, Saga says a taser is a gun used by a policeman to stop somebody with electricity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, um, how about a camera? Right, so closed circuit television cameras. Okay, those are definitely used to control uh, society objects, right? Okay. And uh, what else? So keep your thinking open. One that comes to mind for me are traffic lights. Okay. So when I visualize, okay, um, what I do here, and this is what you should do um, to find, because sometimes uh, a really good question that a lot of students ask me is, how do I find uh, these great ideas for my part two. Okay, one of the really good ways to do this, okay, one good strategy to find uh, great choices for your part two response is to reflect on your daily activities and um, think about uh, what you happen, what happens, uh, you not even think about and visualize. Living a typical day, okay? So for example, Okay, um, so uh, this would be a good example of this, all right? So I'm kind of visualizing all of the different devices and objects that control me on an average day in my life, okay? Maybe even exiting my home, there's a lock, right? So I have to open, close it with a key. So if you're really kind of paying attention to details and you're visualizing, you notice that there are a lot of objects uh, in society that are designed to control us in one way or another. So even just exiting your home, right? Or turning off the gas on the oven, 
So off on buttons, right? Um, control society, locking the door, the door lock locks control society. Obviously, they either allow you to go in somewhere or they do not allow you to go in somewhere. Um, and then you get into your car and in your car, you have your brakes and your emergency brake. Those are objects that help to control society. Uh, then you stop at a red light. The lights control society. Okay. Um, so there are lots and lots of different objects that help to control society. And one way that you can find a lot of those is just by really visualizing and reflecting um, your, uh, your, your life and reflecting on what you experience in a day. Is everybody clear on that? So is everybody clear on that visualization, turning on the TV, listening, of course, to the news in the morning? So uh, those are other ways that were controlled as well. Is everybody kind of picking up this idea of how to visualize your average daily life and then pick out these elements? Okay. So Janiel says, yes. Rashika says, yes. Like putting on a helmet. Honey's got it too. Great. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit of a veto vote here and I'm going to make the choice of traffic lights. Okay. All right, so let's talk about traffic lights. That's going to be the choice for the day. Um, we want some notes, okay? Um, for our notes, uh, what is the um, appearance of a traffic light? Or actually, before the appearance, uh, let's go through these. You don't need to write this down. This is just for your learning right now, but the origin, okay? So... Uh, where do traffic lights come from? Hey, that's a good question. Okay, so let's go with traffic lights. I think that's a really good one. Um, let's go with the origin. Uh, so where does the traffic light come from? And of course, you know, you probably haven't Googled, you know, where's a traffic light made, but you can, I'm sure, think about where a traffic light might come from. Okay. So how does it get to <laughs> where it needs to be, okay? So who manufactures them? Who buys them? Who installs them? Okay, traffic lights. Doesn't come from cars. It comes from a factory somewhere. I'm not sure where. But um, Janiel says probably from Europe, probably from Britain, the 20th century. Okay, origin, maybe Europe. Yeah, okay, probably where cars were popular first doesn't have to be the truth by the way if you can kind of guess or infer that's fine okay um who buys them though do you go out and buy yourself a traffic light so who buys them who installs them who manufactures them what would you guess what would be your best educated guess okay this is where quick thinking leads to good language easy language detailed language okay so I would think of words like, um, government purchase, civil engineering. Yeah, very good. While I was writing that, a lot of you said the same, right? It's never one person that goes out and buys a traffic light, but it's the government, um, the municipality, the city that goes, buys the traffic light as they're needed. And that decision is probably often uh, aided with civil engineering in the city that are designing the traffic grid and so on, right? Okay, so that's where it comes from. And... Um, what idea does it come from? So why do you think um, uh, this uh, need for traffic lights um, happened? So where does this need for the traffic light come from? Think about that as well. Why did somebody one day wake up and say, hey, I think we need some traffic lights. And again, um, remember what I said here earlier. Simple is beautiful. Simple is beautiful. So uh, it's not easy. Simple is not easy, but it is beautiful. So quick, simple thinking will lead to great answers in part two. Okay. 
Um, Prathamesh says to regulate vehicles on the road to man manage the traffic properly. Again, visualize here. Um, Rashika says to decrease accidents. Those are the reasons we have them. Um, what do you think came first, traffic lights or cars? I'm sure many of you will say, well, cars came first. So cars were first, then traffic lights. Um, at what point, so at what time do you think traffic lights were introduced? And the answer I'm looking for here, I'm kind of fishing for it here, is Okay, probably way back in the day, uh, cars and horses used to share the road with people, and then there were more and more cars, and eventually there were so many cars that people and society said, hey, we need to regulate this traffic um, to reduce accidents. So these are all the ideas that are going through my head, but my actual notes um, would just go look like this, maybe. Okay. So, this would be my actual notes, all right, to help me remember and expand. So here, I'm writing all of this to have clarity in the class, but on the note paper um, for origin, I would probably have Europe, Civil Eng, many cars, okay? Or even just cars, honey, exactly. Um, does everybody get that? So your notes have to be very quick and useful and simple. So they should be words that help you to expand and express your ideas while you're giving your two-minute response. Um, so you would never write all of this. It's way too much time. All you would write is something like this. Europe, civil eng, many cars, um, factories, okay? Maybe something like that. That's where they come from, okay? Okay, somewhere in the world. So something like that. That would be my notes for origin. Okay, and then appearance. Let's do this one. Um, so what do traffic lights look like? Okay, usually. Uh, describe for me what a traffic light looks like. Okay. So colors. All right. What can you tell me about traffic lights? So if you think about a traffic light, what comes to mind for you? What are the descriptors? Again, in this part, think about your listener like an alien. So I come from another planet. The challenge is to tell me what a traffic light looks like, okay? Okay, good. So. Yep, stand, high, boxes, long, okay, good. I don't know if it's iron, pretty. Um, it's definitely metal of some sort, yep, I agree. Okay, honey says circular, yep. Bright, right, that would be a very uh, key, important word. Um, is bright. Traffic lights are extremely bright. Okay. All right. Okay. And there are many different kinds. There are some that have different shapes, some that have arrows, uh, some that flash. Okay. Um, so there's a lot that you can say there. Now, it's important if you realize that, whoa, there's a lot of information that I can tell about the appearance of traffic lights. Um, some are uh, horizontal, some are perpendicular. So if you go to Florida, to Miami, you're going to see traffic lights are actually this way instead of this way. All right. Um, if you're in Victoria, where I'm at right now, you'll see that the traffic lights are this way. Okay. But in um, Miami, Florida, they're this way, okay? So in different places, they can look a little bit different as well. Okay, um, what's the function? 
So what is the function of traffic lights? How are they used? Okay. And again, for your notes, uh, you don't just want to uh, state the obvious. Okay. So Nico says uh, to control vehicles. Where especially? Okay, Nico. So you wouldn't write down control vehicles because that's given. We all know that traffic lights are used to control vehicles. So what would be useful information? Okay. Now this is how they work, not their importance yet. So Preeti says to prevent road accidents. Sure, that's going to be the importance. We'll talk about that in a moment, but that's the last part of describing this object. For right now, we just want to describe their function. Okay, so how does it actually work? Okay. Yeah, so Janiel says red is stop, yellow is ready, green is go. Okay, or yellow is yield as well. Okay, so. So I wouldn't write down red, stop, or green, go, because I think that we will remember. Okay. All right. Um, but how do they work? Okay. They work automatically, Prashika says. So they're programmed. Sure. That's good. Okay. Give, keep it simple. You're talking to an alien. Okay. Uh, where do you usually find them? Intersections, right? Okay. All right. Um, they stay on a color for a couple of minutes. Okay. So again, uh, the trick to a good answer in part two, where you're really getting a great mark is to sound like a professor. Okay. Imagine yourself um, as if you are in a civil engineering class and you're basically holding a lecture on the history and significance of traffic lights. Can everybody imagine that right now? Imagine that you are a professor, you're in a civil engineering class, and your uh, goal f probably for an entire 90 minute class easily. So think about it here. You have to talk for two minutes in the IELTS exam, but I'm sure, and I think you will agree with me. Maybe some of, if you think I'm crazy, then tell me, but I think you will agree with me that a civil engineering professor uh, will talk about traffic lights easily for an entire 90 minute class without repeating too much information. Uh, I might even guess they would talk about this topic for more than a week. Um, of lectures talking about the history and significance of traffic lights. So you have a lot of content for the two minutes. Okay. All right. So uh, Janiel says, I'm a CAD professor. <laughs> Saga, you're not me. <laughs> you're a, a civil engineering professor. Okay. Um, so you're talking about how these traffic lights work. And I'm sure one of the points that you will mention is the importance of timing. So how much time uh, traffic lights uh, stay on one color. Uh, let's take that one step further. Okay, so this is where I want to train you members and viewers to explore your mind, to explore your thinking. Um, what do you think determines how long a traffic light is green or red? So what decides whether that traffic light is green for one minute or for three minutes? What do you think? What's, what's the dec deciding factor? I know that some lights, they go green really quickly. Some lights, they take a long time to go green. Why is that? Why do we have those differences in the programming of these lights? Okay. What's the logic of that? Yeah. So Prathamesh says it's based on number of vehicles, right? So based on how heavy that traffic is or how big that road is, depends on the size of the road. Yeah. A highway will get a green light for a long time. If you're coming from a side road, you have to wait much, much longer, right? So maybe write down the word parameters. 
Okay, so different kinds of parameters. All right, so lots of information there. Okay, so how they function. Um, they're high above the traffic, right? Okay, now we go to importance. All right. So uh, now we, we can say reduce accidents. Now again, I probably wouldn't write down reduce accidents because I know that, okay? That's something that I'm going to easily remember. There we go, Nico says to reduce traffic congestion. So okay. So lights are used to uh, reduce accidents. Uh, they're used to control the uh, flow of traffic. Uh, anything else? So is there any other purpose for uh, traffic lights um, other than controlling the flow of traffic and to reduce the number of accidents? Can you think of any other reason why there might be uh, lights on the road? I can think of one, and I know they're doing this in, in cities now as well. This is an interesting one. And when you can think about this kind of idea, then, um, then that can really help to bump up your score because you're gonna, going to come up with some very original, clever language. So uh, they're definitely used for these, and I can definitely think of one more reason that we have um, traffic lights. Okay, so to manage foot pedestrians, yeah. Foot traffic is called pedestrians, okay, pedestrian, yeah, okay, um, yeah, protect pedestrians as well, absolutely, okay, and another one that comes to mind is uh, emergency vehicles. So I'm not sure if you know this, but emergency vehicles actually do in some cases. Yeah, there we go. Pretty thought about it. Emergency medical services. Yeah. So emergency vehicles can actually control traffic lights now in some uh, cases so that it helps them to uh, get to an emergency like a fire or to help save someone's life much faster. Okay. All right. Good. So now we've got a lot of information. The trick members the trick is to come up with the concept of traffic light and to come up with the concept of all this information within that one minute time or something similar if it's not a traffic light to come up with a different idea and then come up with this kind of valuable information this really can have a massive impact on your overall uh, score maybe you will agree with me hopefully um, that if you think about this idea, you're going to do much better than if you think of a very broad idea like computers. If you try to talk about how computers are used to control people and society, that's a very difficult topic because there's just so much information, it's hard to be focused. Okay, so Saga, you need to speak for two minutes. And again, like I said, it's not too hard to do when you have uh, good information. Now, before the examiner uh, starts you uh, in your response, you need to think of your first sentence. Okay, so give me your first sentence. So you're getting ready. Um, again, you have to talk for two minutes. The examiner is just about to say, okay, uh, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Uh, so you got to have your first sentence ready so you can talk about it quickly. Um, here we go, everyone. And we're going to do this nice and fast. We've got 10 minutes to put together this part two response. I just want you to start with your first sentence. And then we're going to use these notes and just go one, two, three, sentence by sentence to tell the examiner about this wonderful object used to control society. Uh, namely the traffic light. Okay, give me your first sentence and then we'll compare. All right, so.
All right. Uh, this is what I've come up with. Uh, type your own, okay? And meanwhile, speak and repeat. So when the examiner says, okay, Adrian, your one-minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking, I would say one object that is commonly used around the world to control society, specifically the movement of people and vehicles, is the traffic light, okay? Um, Rashika says the traffic light is an object that is used to control society in many parts of the world. Yeah, so be fluent, Rashika, but it's a great start. Saga says the, the traffic light is a great example of an object which manages people's movements every day. Very good. Not traffic system, Saga, because traffic system is much more complex, um, way too broad of a topic. Just uh, stick to traffic light. Okay, just stick to traffic light. All right. Okay. Um, now that we've introduced our topic, we have to uh, think about its origin. So again, you're going through step by step. Okay. Uh, Preeti says an object uh, which is used to control society is a traffic light, specifically movement of people and vehicles. Very nice, Preeti. Very close to what I said. Now the origin. Okay. All right, so again, origin, right? And I'm using my notes. So if I have to, I stop, I look at my notes, I look at my questions. But of course, the nice thing is because I have them, a lot of that information is now stored in my head, so I'm moving along nicely, okay? Uh, Janiel says, traffic lights are one of the objects that monitor society, especially cars that are used by millions of people for their work, daily commutes, um, also for entertainment and going uh, to enjoy life for trips. Yeah, absolutely, Jainil. It's a good start. Saga says, these controllers have emerged in Europe in the 20th century when first cars were produced and used by civilians on the road. Very nice, Saga. Nice writing. Good grammar. Well done. Okay. Um, this is what I wrote. Uh, keep writing, students. I want to see some nice fluency from you. Uh, uh, don't worry about making mistakes. That's why I'm here. Okay. All right, so with the growing number of cars, mostly in Europe, in the early 20th century, a clear demand for controlling traffic emerged, and governments and civil engineers started to produce and install these lights to regulate the movements of automobiles. Okay. Rashika says, the vehicles are significantly increasing in the world in the 20th century, and considering uh, the European society, uh, they made these traffic lights, uh, and then it spread around the world. Okay, Rashika, good. I like the fluency. You have a couple grammatical mistakes in there, but that's not a problem. I've corrected those, okay? So nice, all right? Um, definitely. Okay, here we go. So now I'm going to describe what these lights look like.
Okay. So here is my description. So the net's the next step, right? Is describing their appearance, what they look like, okay? Um, so this is what I wrote. These lights are usually fairly large rectangular boxes about a meter in length and contain three circular powerful lights which are red, yellow, and green. They are most commonly attached to long metal poles that hang over intersections roughly at five meter height. Okay, so now we can visualize uh, this object, this traffic light. And yes, this is what you have to do. You have to speak to the examiner like they came from another planet. They're very clever and you're introducing them to the way of humanity on planet Earth. That's what they want to hear. Clear, clean communication. It's just like what the professor would be explaining to you in your civil engineering class. Okay. Uh, Saga says this prolonged box with three sections um, attached to a stand in a certain position on the road uh, have red, yellow, and green lights. Very nice, okay? Some uh, grammatical mistakes there, Saga, but you're on the right track. Uh, Prathamesh says uh, these lights are mostly a tall rectangular box equipped with three colors of lights, uh, red, which resembles stop yellow to get ready and green which means that the driver can go okay Preeti says the invention of the traffic light uh, comes from Europe so they can control the many cars on the road uh, later governments and civil engineers launched it uh, at many intersections around the world okay very good Preeti nice on the right track as well Rashika uh, there are several types of traffic gadgets that we can see in different areas, uh, usually made uh, of a long metal box. Very good, Rashika. I like how everybody's picking up their fluency. You're making a few more mistakes, but that's okay because fluency is important. Okay. All right. Good. There are some variations uh, which include, for example, arrows to show uh, a certain direction of traffic. But the most common are the circular type. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So now we have origin. Um, we have the clear appearance here. We've introduced the topic. Now we talk about the function. Okay. So day and night.
Okay, so we're really moving along. All right, Preeti says traffic lights look like rectangular boxes. Uh, they don't look like, they are. So traffic lights are rectangular boxes with three different lights, red, yellow, and green. Each light has a specific meaning, such as yellow means pause for a few seconds, green means go, and uh, red says stop. Okay. Saga says this: these lights are established above the road, roughly five meters, and each light has a certain amount of time of um, light. However, this time is not always the same because it depends on the size of the road. Very good, uh, Saga, and good correction with the these. Okay. All right. So uh, here we go. Um, there are some variations which include, for example, arrows to show a certain direction of traffic, but the most common are the circular type. Day and night, these lights instruct vehicle operators when to stop on a red light, when to be cautious and prepared to stop or start on a yellow light, and when they are okay to go on a green light. These lights also indicate when motorists can or cannot make turns. The lights run on an automated system of timers. A light may be green or red for a long or short time, depending on the size and use of the road. On a highway, lights often stay green for a long time to avoid congestion. Okay. The primary reason, so now I get into uh, the use of these, okay? The primary reason these traffic lights are used are to both decrease the number of motor vehicle accidents such as cars smashing well we can say crashing into each other at intersections as well as to keep the smooth uh, flow of traffic and avoid uh, traffic jams as much as possible. In some cases, emergency vehicles like ambulances can control these lights so that they can uh, get to people in need much faster. Without these lights, it is difficult to imagine that cars would be possible in today's crowded cities. Okay, now at this point, and don't forget this students, I want to look at the card, all right? So, um, how does it control people? We've answered that. So what is the object? We've answered that. How does this object work? We've answered that. Uh, where is this object usually located? We answered that. Uh, what do people think about it? I haven't really answered that. So I want to answer uh, what do people really think about it, okay? Um, <laughs> so look at the card, and I'm sure some of you are smiling with me at this time as well. So, I think that most people hate traffic lights because they make uh, people wait often when they are in a rush. But in reality, I'm sure that deep down, Many people appreciate the tireless work that traffic lights do to keep 
them save. Okay. All right. So there is my response. That's roughly uh, two minutes. Uh, let's go through this together. Okay. Uh, let's uh, go from the top. Again, speak and repeat. So here we go. Uh, one object that is commonly used around the world to control society, specifically the movement of people and vehicles, is the traffic light. With the growing number of cars, mostly in Europe, in the early 20th century, a clear demand for controlling traffic emerged and governments and civil engineers started to produce and install these lights to regulate the movements of automobiles. These lights are usually fairly large rectangular boxes about a meter in length and contain three circular powerful lights which are red, yellow and green. They are most commonly attached to long metal poles that hang over the intersection roughly at five meters height. There are some variations which include, for example, arrows to show a certain direction of traffic, uh, but the most common are the circular type. Day and night, these lights instruct vehicle operators when to stop on a red light, when to be cautious and prepared to stop or start on a yellow light, and when they are okay to go on a green light. These lights also indicate when motorists can or cannot make turns. The lights run on an automated system of timers. A light may be green or red. for a long or short time, depending on the size and use of the road. On a highway, lights often stay green for a long time to avoid congestion. The primary reason these traffic lights are used are to both decrease the number of motor vehicle accidents, such as cars crashing into each other at intersections, as well as to keep the smooth flow of traffic and avoid traffic jams as much as possible. In some cases, emergency vehicles like ambulances can control these lights so that they can get to people in need much faster. Without these lights, it's difficult to imagine that cars would be possible in today's crowded cities. I think that most people hate traffic lights because they make people wait uh, often when they are in a rush. But in reality, I'm sure that deep down, many people appreciate the tireless work that traffic lights do to keep them safe. And at this point, I think the examiner will say, okay, that is the end of part two. Now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you a question or two in regards to your response and uh, some questions related to this topic, okay? Preeti says, these lights are automatic and the time of the lights depends on the size of the road and the number of vehicles. Like, Highways has a little bit more time than uh, inner city roads. Yeah, pretty, very good. Uh, normal roads, doesn't really make sense, but yeah, or smaller side roads, okay? Uh, pretty says traffic lights not only reduce accidents in daily life to save people, but also prevent congestion on roads and help pedestrians to walk safely. Okay, very good. Rashika says the function of the traffic lights is to control vehicles and make a clear path for drivers. Very nice, Rashika. Those are some good sentences. Try this uh, response on your own at home, okay, members? So from the start to the finish, talk about traffic lights. Uh, tomorrow, we will do speaking part three. That will be a continuation of this part two. So definitely come back and hang out. And members, uh, tomorrow we have a question and answer session, okay? So Q&A. Um, I would love to get your feedback on uh, uh, how you find this time as well. We're considering some other times also. So definitely come uh, tomorrow for the Q&A session for members and ask me any question you have about IELTS and about what we're doing and what our plans are for the future. I would love to talk to you about that. Okay, everyone, uh, coming up in 30 minutes. We have uh, another listening class. This will be listening parts three and four, the more challenging parts of the listening section. So make sure to hang around for that. Uh, I'm signing out for now, but I will be back shortly. So hang around. I'm Adrian, and I'm signing out from Victoria. Check out aehelp.com for academic outs and gelshelp.com for general outs where you'll find lots of videos and help. Bye for now. See you soon.